All right, Black Goose TV family, I'm not even going to get fancy on y'all with this one because it's just too much going on right now, right? I can't, I can't set up the mic. I can't set up the video. I don't got time for that. Look. Andy Ruiz Jr. And no. And no. TKO Anthony Joshua, seventh round. It was the craziest fight ever. I'm not going to make this a breakdown. I'm not going to make this an analyst. I'm telling y'all post-fight results more than one fight, not just this fight. But I got to talk about this one for a minute. Look, Andy Ruiz looked amazing from beginning to end. The only time he even had trouble, if you want to call it trouble, was the first round. Anthony Joshua was using his jab, jab, jab. But what was interesting to me, Anthony Joshua... Everyone knows he comes with the high guard. Even if you look at his public workout, what did he do? He came out with the high guard. Now, see, if I wasn't holding my phone, I would be able to show you what I'm talking about. But the high guard is basically both hands in front of your face and always in front of your face. He'd be able to block punches and he's always able to move on the inside. He doesn't have to use his head movement as much with the high guard because you can block punches, you can parry punches, things like that. But now let's get back to the point. He didn't come out with that. He came out with the Philly shell. Not only did he come out with the Philly shell, it wasn't even really the Philly shell. It was more like the Mayweather shoulder rope. When you want the only reason I say that is because his hand was so low at the very beginning of the fight to the very end of the fight. I'm talking about his lead hand, his jab. It was always very, very low. The Philly shell usually keep it up to about right here, right? You can block things with your shoulder. Or at the same time, you can parry things away. If I had my right hand, I would use it to parry things away, right? A parry away a jab. But yet, yeah, he had his hand here. Right? And that's more of the shoulder roll. Now, if you're going to do the shoulder roll, the only way you're going to do the shoulder roll, if you have that hand rolled, you're going to have the shoulder here. The only reason why you have the shoulder here is because you're protecting the chin. You see that? Now, see, the only way you drill this, the only way you do this is you have to do it over and over and over and over again. Because it's very natural to keep the hand low in the Philly shell. But if you keep it too low, it now becomes the Mayweather roll, which now you need to have this here at all times. Because what does this do? This is basically like a high guard, right? Instead of having your hand here, you have your shoulder here. If you don't have your shoulder here, you better have your hand here. You can't just be here. But if there's one thing that was very interesting to me, when Anthony Joshua came out of the entrance, he didn't seem the same. Not only that but it was delayed he was supposed to come out at a certain point they had the cameras on his entrance for a period even the announcer at one point said well we're all waiting for anthony joshua just like you are i'm not taking anything away from the winner because i never will andy ruiz jr deserved everything because he boxed he was a better boxer he threw the better combinations and he took the better punches now but i just had the point i had to throw this out there because when he came out he did not look the same now, if I'm talking too fast, please try and keep up because I have to break this down as fast as possible. I don't want y'all getting lost in the sauce. So, now, next point. Joshua, they were calling out his name when they do the introduction. It was uh, <sighs> Buffer, Bruce, Mike, one of them. I don't remember their name at the point, but I know it was a Buffer. And they said, let's get ready to rumble. Anthony Joshua in the corner. He did not look the same. He always does his little pop, 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 and he throws an uppercut. Mm, he didn't really care. He didn't have a care in the world. Andy Ruiz seemed focused. All of his trainers seemed focused. All right. So they came out in the first round. Anthony Joshua, not really much going on. He threw a jab. Stalemate. But I gave it to AJ. Second round. Andy Ruiz, 3-2-3. Three, three. Caught him a couple times. Nothing really didn't really catch, but he was more aggressive. I gave it to Ruiz. Third round. Ruiz got knocked down with the uppercut. Classic AJ uppercut. Boom, boom. But Ruiz got right back up. And the only reason it happened was because Ruiz got very sloppy and that was the only way he was going to be beaten he took that away and what did he start doing he started throwing the three two three consistently it was very amazing he didn't just throw the three two three once he threw it twice he threw it three times and he ducked the three that came right after his defense was amazing a lot of people aren't going to talk about this but the defense from andy ruiz jr was amazing he was blocking hooks he was ducking and weaving his head movement was on point the jab never caught him all right, the jab caught him a couple times, but it didn't catch him to affect him. Maybe a couple times to snap his head back, but it didn't do anything to make him stop coming forward. It was a beautiful performance by Andy Ruiz Jr. Where was I at? By the way, Randy, Andy Ruiz Jr. knocked down Joshua twice with that 3-2-3 combo in the third round. So, 10-8 Ruiz Jr., fourth round stalemate, whoever you want to give it to, give it to. Fifth round, AJ, beautiful jab. Sixth round, Andy Ruiz Jr., very aggressive, 3-2-3 all over, and it caught multiple times. I'm at the sixth round, right? Seventh round, Andy Ruiz Jr. went right back to that. And what did he end up doing? He stopped him. AJ got stopped. TKO. He was still standing. He wanted to keep going. Four knockdowns. I don't know if you're able to do that. 
If you want to, you can. He's still young. He has time to rebound. It was an amazing fight. That's the breakdown of that, and that's the longest. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go into these other fights real quick. Katie Taylor won against Delphine Pursoon. I got to get her name right because Delphine Pursoon fought amazingly. I thought Delphine won, in my opinion, but they gave it to Kelphine. You know, decision. Very disrespectful. At least making a split decision. Very disrespectful. Chris Algieri, of course. He did what I thought he would do. He stopped Tommy Cole after eight rounds. I don't remember what I called it. I may have called it a decision, but he won. Chris Algieri, Stop Tommy Cole after eight rounds. It was a beautiful display of boxing from what I'm reading. I didn't catch that fight. Maybe it was you. Josh Buwazi did exactly what I thought he did. He battered. Stop Marco Antonio. Better on in fourth round. Colum Smith. It was a bit. Now I caught that one. Whew. That two, he was throwing to bow. He caught Hassan. The thing about Hassan and Dom, he was a very good fighter. But he was hopping in and out every time he wanted to get in the inside. Rather than throwing a combination to get on the inside, he was hopping in and out. Hopping in and out. And the thing about hopping in and out is you can time something like that. You may be very quick. You may be able to block things. But at the end of the day, if you're hopping in and out, you can time when that back foot plants. And that's exactly what Colin Smith did. He knocked him down two times with the check left hook. And then he ended up finishing him with the right hand because he timed him right on that back foot. Bow! It was a beautiful performance. Great sportsmanship from Hassan and Dom. He kept getting up. It's not like he got knocked out cold. So great job from him. Devon Alexander, I did not catch this fight, but I did think he was going to lose this fight. He ended up losing the way I didn't think he would lose, though. Um, Ivan Redcatch KOs him Devon, in, six, in the sixth round. Ivan Redcatch KO Devon Alexander in the sixth round. That was on PBC, by the way. Watch it. I'm going to talk about that. Willie Monroe decision. Hugo Centino over 10. I thought Willie Monroe would win. I called it a decision. Uh, Willie Monroe, it's good to see you back. So, that's going to be it for the night. Uh, I might come out with one more video. One more video. I'm going to talk about it. Black Goose TV all day.